Good evening, family. Merry Christmas. We are delighted to have you here together tonight with us as we just want to take this evening to just celebrate Jesus and what an incredible gift that God has given us by sending us his son. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is just kind of walking through some of the biblical truths and singing some of the carols that will allow us just to celebrate him and the gift that he is to us. And then we'll just be sharing together, remembering that this baby came not only to live, but also to die in our place, to show God's grace to us, to invite us into that victory. So we just want to start with prayer. If you'll pray with me. Father, we come before you tonight so thankful, so amazed that you would love us so. And so we ask that tonight you would help us slow down. We've been running pretty fast today. and Everybody's got stuff they wanted to get done, but we want to just submit ourselves to you and hear from you and be encouraged by you. And we thank you that you sent light to us. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to open our hearts to that light tonight, that we would no longer walk in darkness, but we'd walk in the light as you are in the light. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we ask it. Amen. I'll be reading from the book of Isaiah, prophecy about the the Lord, chapter 9. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark place and dark land, the light will shine upon them. For a child will will be born unto us, a son will be given. And the government will rest upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace. On the throne of David, over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice And righteousness from then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Let's celebrate Jesus, our Savior. Feliz Navidad.
all today and celebrate father thank you jesus in your name amen you may be seated seated welcome to the jerome prairie family as we gather tonight we we do want to just encourage you to relax to quit working on your list to set those things aside and to really take in the significance of the whole event that we are celebrating, that you would be encouraged that God was one who reached out to us with light. And so tonight as we celebrate by candlelight, we just want this to be something to draw you to the light of Christ because he is the one who gives light to all who are willing to receive it. So I just trust as we sing these songs and read these scriptures that your heart will be drawn to the light of Jesus Christ. He's changed my life, and I know he can change yours as well. Let's stand. We'll sing another song. O come all ye faithful.
Chapter 2. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabitants of earth. This was the first census taken while Aquarius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called 
Bethlehem because he was of the house and the family of David in order to register along with Mary who was engaged to him and was with child. And while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. up and sing to him. Sing, and you'll sing, praise to the 
시간이 보이게 This on earth here with us Do your way from Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 20 in the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night and an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were terribly frightened but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem, then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. 
and all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. Let's stand up again, please.
Amen. Amen. Lord, we come to you knowing that you and your great goodness have graced us with Jesus. And we did nothing to deserve it, and yet we desperately needed a Savior, so you sent us one. And I just pray you'd open our hearts tonight as we look at your word and think about your love. Open our eyes to the light that we might walk in the light. By your glory, teach. Amen. You may be seated. Mary and Joseph sit quietly in the the late of the night discussing what they had just watched, their firstborn coming into the world. Joseph turns to Mary and says, he will save his people from their sins. Mary says, the son of the Most High. How did they know? Because heaven sent light. Moments later, while perhaps Mary was there trying to grab a little bit of sleep after her exhaustion, sheep are heard bleeding just outside the entrance. And in they come, shepherds smelling as only shepherds can. Saying, this is the one of whom we've been told. The Savior, Christ the Lord. How did they know? Heaven sent light. Over a year later, Magi from the east arrived, coming into the home in Bethlehem, presenting on their knees gold, silver, and frankincense, myrrh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. How did they know? Heaven sent light. Yesterday evening when I came out of finishing up a little of that last minute shopping, I know none of you did, as we came out, there was a planet shining brightly in the sky, and it just reminded me that when God wanted to get our attention, he hung a star in the sky to tell us that his son was born, to give us light, to show us something that we wouldn't see unless he made it possible for us to see. And you know, God gives light to all. But it becomes guidance to those who believe. Because just because you see light doesn't mean you follow light. If you have ever had the misfortune of driving your car off the road in the dark, you realize just because you have light doesn't mean you stay on the road. You have to make adjustments in your life to follow light. And so not all receive light. Some reject light. Some of you tried to get children up earlier last week to go to school. (laughs) You know, you turn on the light, you know, and you get that response of blankets pulled over heads, right? Light is not always welcomed. But when God gives us light, it's because we need it. And he gave light into the world through Jesus Christ. It wasn't a myth. It wasn't a legend. Jesus is a revelation of the character and love of God to us. A very gift 
And so as we think about this tonight, you know, faith can draw you towards the light or frustration can push you away from the light. You know, you, this baby we came to celebrate tonight is a gift for all. That's what the angels told the shepherds. There's been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And they said, for all, this is good news for all people, but they said, it's for you. And there was this individual, personalized declaration made that no matter who you are here tonight, the Word of God says the Savior was born for you, which also means you need a Savior. And that's why God sent you a Savior. He sent light. Children are the gift of God. We hear their voices here tonight, and that's intentional. It is okay. If they're screaming too loud for you to hear me, take them out. But other than that, children have these voices that just remind you of the presence of God, the joy. And this time of year, it's so fun to watch their excitement. And God sent us a gift in the form of a baby so that we would trust him. But the one that was born and laid in a feed trough, manger sounds really pretty. Isn't it nice how we change words? (laughs) Feed trough, that's what we're talking about. That one grew up to be a man. And as a man, he continued to give light to those who would listen. And there's a verse in John 8, the 12th verse, it says this regarding him. He says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Candles are an illustration of light that Christ brings. That there is more that we can see because there's light given. That we can discern more because there's light given. Most of us have had the uncomfortable experience of walking through the house that you think you know quite well with the lights out in the middle of the dark and finding out that light would have been helpful for your toes to not wrap themselves around that piece of furniture or find that Lego left laying in the floor. Light gives us guidance for things to do and things not to do. Isn't that right? It it provides direction for our lives. People who live in darkness need light. We can walk in darkness without him, but we cannot walk with him unless we walk in the light. And so Jesus is not just a baby in a manger. Christmas is not some amazing story of a coincidence of a crazy circumstantial birth that a young man and woman had a baby and was born in a barn. The birth of Jesus Christ was a well-planned event orchestrated by God to communicate spiritual significance to us that you would know that God loves you. Many of you will be going home this evening and exchanging gifts. Given because there's love in your heart towards that other person in the family. At least I certainly hope that's why you gave them that gift. And yet, the amazing story of the Bible is, is that God sent gifts not to those who were family, but to those who'd run away. To those who had rejected him. To those who refused his love, he said, I will send my son. And so in sending us a person, God gives light. I mentioned this on Sunday that it says, you know, when you you open up your your gift and you look inside and there's a book, well, you you realize, okay, I've, I've got the chance to gain some knowledge, right? You know, you open it up and it's a toy and, oh, I'm going to get to play. You know, you open up and it's a tool and you realize, oh, I get to do some work. But if you were to open up a box on Sunday morning and there is an infant inside, you realize there's this whole different relationship that's going to take place. 
And that's what God has done. He's given us a person. And each of you who have been blessed to, to be around a child, you realize there's this amazing relationship that we're invited into when God brings a child into your life. And God sent his son that you might know he loves you, but also, because you all heard that and heard that and heard that, right? But it says here that, that he might give us light. And so Jesus says to us that I am the light of the world. Not I ought to be, not that I could be, but I am the light, not a light. And he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So Jesus was sent by the Father to give us an understanding of this life that we might walk with the Father, to walk in relationship. So when, when we share things like this, when Jesus said things like this, do you know that he offended people in his day? I'm not sure if they were spiritual snowflakes or not, but, but there were people in his day when Jesus would say stuff and, and people would get ticked off about it. And just like this, that he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light. You're saying I'm walking in darkness. Yes, I am. Do you get offended by that? You see, here's something that I've discovered, and just share it with you. You can chew on it if you want. When truth confronts the lies that you believe, it's easier to get offended by the truth than it is to repent of your lies. Sometimes we don't like to be told the truth. Did you need another piece of pie? Hey, what kind of question is that? But there's things that, that will irritate us when actually it's someone trying to bring truth into our lives. Maybe in love, maybe not so much. But when God speaks to us, he wants to bring his love to light in us. And so this baby that we celebrate grew up and explained life and truth. And you know, when you unwrap a present, it allows you to see what's in there. I was shaking a few underneath the tree today. There were new ones. You got to check that stuff out. <laughs> but my family's pretty good with the disguising, so I was unable to even do any reasonable guessing. But when Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, he took the guesswork out of it. He didn't say, I hope you can figure out who I am. He says, I am the light of the world. And so with that, he gives us truth. He is the revelation of God to us, God to man, where God became man. And so now it's our response to light that's been given that determines the relationship that we have. Some of you, when your first child was born had not a, a clue to what you just got yourself into. Is this a true story? <laughs> but at that point, you realize, particularly when, you know, all the family goes home and you're there with this crying child in the middle of the night, that we're going to need to make some adjustments in life. I always say when you get married, you realize, boy, I was pretty selfish. And then when you have children, you realize I was really selfish. And now my life just kind of goes away. I've, you give your life away to something. There's a relationship that starts. And so when God sent Jesus to us, he's inviting us to respond to him relationally. And so Jesus said this, he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He doesn't say he who reads about me. He doesn't say he who goes to a Christmas Eve service. He who follows, he who orders his life after my life. You know, it's an interesting thing to think about, but, you know, if you were following Jesus in his day, if Jesus left one town and went to another, you could tell if you were following because either you went with him or you didn't. And the issue in our day is oftentimes we can say we're following. But the issue is, is, does my life become more loving? Is my life more forgiving? Am I embracing the challenges? 
I mean, some of you are going home, let's just be straight here, to an awkward day tomorrow. You got that crazy uncle. You got that sister that just rubs your fur the wrong way every time they come over. It's a great chance to follow Jesus and show love. There's an invitation for us that when I walk in submission to Jesus Christ, that's what follow means. I, I will submit to him. Some of you went shopping with your children. What a fun experience that is, right? Hey, hey, stay with me here. Stay with me. You're constantly trying to get them to what? To follow. Jesus Christ invites you to follow him. He offers light. He says, he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He says, he gives light that actually brings you to understand what this life is about. And that's one of the things that we find within the Bible. There's these pages of light revealing God's truth and God's plan for you and his choices for you. And so he reveals that following him is, is a light to the path. It gives direction, but it does require submission because everybody likes a party, but not everybody likes the path. Do you know what I'm talking about? And there's times I'm a little bit adventuresome, and there's occasionally that I'll say, hey, let's go here. And my wife will say, I don't think I'm going on that path. <laughs> you know, and, and there's that spot where I have to realize that I have to think through the fact that I may be asking her to do something that's not healthy for her knees. But do you understand that we have to trust God when he says, I want you to walk this out. I want you to choose to forgive. I want you to to come alongside and continue to give your child loving truth and correction, even though you've told them that a hundred times before. There's this continued work that God does in our lives when we follow him. And so he offers a light that gives us life. And Jesus can give light to your world by coming tonight. Hey, it's a great choice. It's a chance to be encouraged about what the light is. But Jesus doesn't come to make recommendations because he is the light. So he reveals truth and he gives commands. He gives directives. And again, that can get offensive to people. Well, who does he think he is? Uh, yeah, God. That's it. Just, just that. He, he knows who he is, and he's revealed who he is. And so when he speaks to us, it's God speaking to us, inviting us to truth and he invites us into this relationship. Just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean it's automatically good, does it? You know, I have been married for 39 years to my best friend. But at times, she hasn't felt like my best friend. <laughs> Usually because I got my head on crooked. But there's a choice to be made when you're in relationship. Just because we got married doesn't mean you live happily ever after, does it? And you can choose at some point in your life, you could have made a choice to follow Jesus at some point, but that doesn't mean you're in a good relationship now. Light is to be followed. He says, follow me. And so we can continue to make choices. And we can make choices to draw near or make choices to push away. People will tell me, you know, they always got to have something to say to the pastor. And they'll say, well, you know, I... I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Say, no. I don't have to live with my wife to be married. <laughs> but when you have a love relationship, you want to get together. You want to spend time together. And that's what we do as a family, is we come together to share the light of the word of God that we can be encouraged to walk after him. And so walking in light will change your life choices. Just like turning on a light in the house will help you make better steps. Reading from the word will give you direction. When I walk in the light, it changes how I treat my wife. It changes how I treat my children, my grandchildren. It changes how I treat my neighbors. Because Jesus has light for you to walk in. 
I just want to encourage you, no matter what workplace you find yourself in, no matter what awkward family you find yourself in, God has light for you. God has a plan for you. And the plan of God for Jesus Christ was to come and to suffer upon a cross to pay for the choices that we made contrary to light. When we chose darkness rather than light, God said, that's sin, and sin deserves punishment. When we break the law, we become criminals. Jesus Christ took on the punishment for our crime. And people will tell me sometimes, well, James, I'm not really a criminal. Well, if God's got laws and you break them, it makes you a criminal. Some of you may have become criminal in the state of Oregon tonight because you don't believe in 50 or 35 or 55, right? You, you don't see yourself as a criminal, but you break the law, that makes you a criminal. You tell a lie, that makes you a liar. You steal something, it makes you a thief. And in those places, that brings us to a place where we needed a Savior, and that's why God sent the Savior to us. And so tonight, I just want to let you know, as we get ready to celebrate communion together here, that there's a Savior been born for you. If you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, he died upon the cross for you and for me, that we might walk in relationship with him, that we might know forgiveness. The Bible says everyone who believes on him receives forgiveness of sin. Why? Because he took our sins upon himself and then rose again from the dead. And so one of the ways that we celebrate that gift that he gives us, that light that he revealed to us that I have paid for your sins, is to have a service we call communion. And in this service, we take a piece of bread and eat it, and we take a cup, and we, a little cup, and we drink it. And the cup is a symbol of his blood, which was poured out for us. The bread is a symbol of his body, which was crucified for us. And by taking of the bread and by taking of the cup, we are saying, I believe that Jesus Christ is God's Son, the Savior, and I'm trusting him to be my light. If you're here tonight with family and you came because you want to be cooperative in your family, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad you came. Please don't feel pressured to partake. You, if you are not trusting in him, you can let the elements go by. If you would like to honor him and recognize what he's done for you when you are served tonight, then you can receive those. And when they're served, what we will do is we will hold them until everyone's been served, and then we'll partake together. Would you join with me? And we just pray a prayer of preparation. I'd like to ask those who are serving if they would go at this time to prepare the elements. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus dying in our place, coming and showing us what light looks like, opening our eyes to the truth. And we're asking that tonight that we could remember you, but really we're coming saying, Lord, we want to follow you more closely. We want to quit walking in the darkness. We want to quit choosing our own way. We don't want to be selfish children. We we want to be responsible, loving disciples. So forgive us for our willfulness, for our rebellion, and wash us clean. Give us afresh your heart for truth. And thank you so much for your sacrifice for us. Amen. As the elements are served, you may find with both things being on the same tray, it helps to serve the person next to you after that goes by so we can assist one another as we're served.
Music can bring truth to your mind, can it not? The notes bring light to the recesses of your understanding. And Jesus gives light to your soul, drawing you to the truth that you might love and follow him. And so he wanted us to never think that you're supposed to try and be good enough, but that you would trust his goodness because we all fell short. That's why God sent us a savior. So this bread is a symbol of his body, which was crucified for you. If your faith is in him, eat you all of it. This cup is the picture of the covenant of forgiveness that God offers to those who receive him. He gives forgiveness of sins. It's a symbol purchased by his blood. Drink you all of it. As the worship team returns, this time we're going to also participate in candle lighting. So I need to give a couple of basic instructions. The goal here is to have a beautiful experience, preferably not burning the person next to you or spreading wax around the house. So, the way this works is that um, the leaders will come to the front and I will light their candle. So, you take an unlit candle and you hold it over the lit candle. And once the candle's lit, then you don't, then you don't tip it again. All right? And so, what they will do is come... And they will connect. And this is actually a picture of what God says. He wants us to humble ourselves before Jesus Christ. That we would draw our light and life from him. That we would be submitted to him. And trust his ability to bring light to us. So as they go to the ends of the rows and begin to help people light your candle. The candle that is lit remains vertical at all times. Let's sing this song together.
here in the darkness we have light I'm going to ask if they'll turn out the rest of the lights it's an amazing amount of light that can be generated when you let your light shine Jesus said I am the light of the world he who follows me will not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life but then he turned to those same disciples and said, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And so we can hold a light and I can hold this up here and all of a sudden you won't see my light. There's things that we can do that block the light. And there's things that we can do that amplify the light. As we sing this next chorus, I just want you to be thinking about is my light receiving and reflecting the light of Christ? Now, if you will carefully lift your light above your head, you'll see that you can indeed make a difference. Again, the interesting thing is, as I told you, keep your life vertical. It is our alignment with God that allows us to reflect light to others in a way that's safe and healthy. You may bring it down carefully, and we'll sing this chorus together. It comes off of the, oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come
the glory. I pray you have in your heart a light. If you've not received that light, it's still there shining for you. But at this moment, for the sake of our candle fire, I'm going to ask that you take and put your hand on the other side so you're cupping the light and that you would gently blow it out. God has given us a savior and when he did he sent us light let us pray Father we thank you so much for your great grace in our lives and we would just ask that we would be those who would follow Jesus the light of the world Lord whatever the questions are that we're wrestling with whatever the pain is that's stumbling us whatever the struggle is that seems to hold on to us when we try to walk the way that's right we come to you the one who is the light of the world and say illumine our hearts and minds that we might choose wisely for the glory of Jesus Christ we ask it amen God bless you. Thanks so much for coming. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad.